me. Um, just as a brief introduction, my name is Anella. I am a GIS analyst on this team. So most of my work is on um, adding the data sets to our website, visualizing them, making sure that they are updated and maintained. So I will start to share my screen. Um, I'll go through a little bit on how the Data Hub is organized, the types of data sets that we feature on our website, um, our process for adding data to the website, the data criteria that we are looking for, and I'll give you a little bit of a demo on some of the dashboards that we have featured on our website. So on our Data Hub, all of the layers, maps, and dashboards are hosted on ArcGIS Online. Um, they are also on the Data Hub on our website. They are categorized by SVG. So as you can see on the right, you can see how many data sets uh, we have for each SDG, and you can click on whatever SDG you're interested in and see what data sets are available for that. We also have three categories of featured data sets. Um, the first one is data relevant to current events. So right now what we have featured are um, a map on wildfires. There's also a map on armed conflict locations and also a dashboard on the COVID vaccine procurement process. Uh, another category that we feature is our most real-time data. So we have a data set on poverty, which is updated in real time, um, a data set on coral bleaching events, which is updated daily, and air quality, uh, which is also updated daily. The third category that we have is the most recently added data sets. So the ones that we have added most recently in the past uh, month or so, uh, the first one is foreign direct investment. We also have a data set on mapping school locations, which Mike will talk about in his presentation. And we have also recently added a data set on global fishing activity. So there are a few types of data featured. I just wanna give an overview of the types of data sets that you'll see on our website. Uh, so the first are surveys and statistics. Usually these data sets are found commonly in reports and on tables. And so we get that data set and we visualize them on a map. Um, other data sets that we have are Earth observations that include satellite imagery, uh, data from monitoring stations and other types of remote sensors. And finally, another type of data that we have featured are models. And I'll go through the process of adding a data set. So typically we'll ask a data provider to submit their data set to our website. Um, after that, we'll review all of the information that they have given us on the form, and we'll consider the eight criteria that I will go through in a little bit uh, to make sure that the data set is applicable to our website and our criteria. Uh, once we figure out if your data set is something that we would like to feature, we'll send a metadata template to fill out so that we have all of the information that we need to feature the data set and make sure that our users know um, everything that they need to know about your data set. Um, and then we'll go through the process of receiving your data and then we'll also visualize it on maps and dashboards. And finally, once that process is over, we will feature the data set on our website on its own data set page and also promote it on all of our social media. So to go through some of the criteria that we have. Um, again, you'll submit the data set on our website on the top right corner um, on our front page. There's a button that says submit your data set and Aniola will go through um, a little bit more of how to navigate the website. Um, so the first thing that we look for uh, is the level of frequency of your data set. So as Maria mentioned, we are mostly interested in timely and real-time data sets. And this frequency is higher than official data sources. Um, and we also want to look at the spatial coverage and disaggregation of that data set. So the data set that you are submitting must be georeferenced. It must have some sort of spatial element so that we can visualize that data set on um, a map. We'll also look at the methodology of how that data set was created. 
Um, we're looking for defined and robust methodologies that have either been peer reviewed or validated in some other way to make sure that the data set that we are featuring um, is robust. Along with that, we'll look through the data sources of that data set and make sure that those data sources are also reliable. Um, next, we'll also look at public accessibility. Uh, so we prefer data that are uh, licensed for reuse and are also open. And this allows our users to sort of hold the data providers accountable for um, their methodological integrity. And also, we also just want to support the accessibility and transparency of data overall. Next, we'll look at thematic relevance. So we want to make sure that the data sets that we feature are relevant to one or more of the SDGs. We'll also look at um, the ease of understanding. So we want to make sure that we don't assume that all of the users that come to our website are GIS experts or even experts on your particular data set. So we want to make sure that these data sets um, are clear and communicable to all users that come across it on our platform. Finally, we want to look at the sustainable, sustainability of production. Um, because this project supports the SDGs, we wanna make sure that the data sets that we feature will be available um, and updated through 2030. So finally, I will give a little bit of a demo on some of the dashboards that we have up <clears throat> on our website. Um, I'll start with the COVID-19 vaccine procurement dashboard that I mentioned earlier. So what I like about this dashboard is that it shows a lot of data sets in one <clears throat> dashboard. So as you can see, there are these um, tabs that you can click on that show three different data um, the first is the population that's able to be vaccinated uh, with the vaccine procurements that each country has uh, acquired. So, for example, the USA has this many doses and it can vaccinate 200% um, of the population. The next map that we have here is the actual procurement. So uh, this is just the total number of doses that each country has acquired. And then finally, the COVAX status of every country, so whether or not they are committed to COVAX or not. Um, and as you can see, there's also a breakdown of the vaccines by company. And if you click here, you select a country, um, Australia, for example, you can see the breakdown of the vaccines that they have procured. Um, and another dashboard that I would like to show is the digital gender gaps dashboard. So I like this dashboard because not only can you select by country, um, but you can also select a time frame that you want the data to show. So for example, the world in July of 2021 or June of 2021, everything changes dynamically. Um, and you can select a country based on that month as well. This dashboard also has two different maps. So um, it shows information by internet, the female to male usage ratio of the internet, and also um, mobile LTE data. Um, and that's about it for me. I just wanted to give um, a brief overview of our data hub, um, some of the data that we feature and give an overview of how you can interact with some of our dashboards and visualizations on the website.